Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve water bottles. My favorite part about this problem, honestly, is analyzing the time complexity. So I can't wait to do that because we're going to get to show off our math skills today. The idea is we're given some drinks like in bottles and they're full. So like that's one parameter, nine full bottles. Now we can actually take empty water bottles and then exchange them for full ones. So in this case, the exchange rate is three. That basically means that we need three empty water bottles to get one full water bottle. So if we start with nine full, we drink them. From there, we can get three more full water bottles. How did I do that though? How did I make that calculation? Well, if we can take three water bottles, get one full one, then can't we just take this number nine, divide it by that exchange rate, and that'll tell us how many full water bottles we can get from that. Okay, but wait, what if there were 10 empty water bottles and then we try to divide that by three? We'll get three full water bottles, but we technically would still have like a single one of these remaining, a single empty water bottle remaining. So instead of dividing, actually, a better idea would be to mod by three. Well, we will divide. We'll divide to get this, but we'll also mod to make sure that we keep track of how many empty bottles that we have. Now, in doing this, we can continue this sort of simulation drink these bottles and then we'll get three empty exchange that for one bottle and then drink that we have one bottle left it's empty but that's not enough obviously to get full bottles through this simulation we basically want to keep track of how many total bottles were we able to drink in this case it looks like it was 13. so i said the word simulation a couple times so that's mainly how we're going to solve this problem. So I'll quickly simulate this, keeping track of how many full bottles we have, how many empty we have, and how many that we drink. Start with nine full, drink them. So let's add nine to the result. So then we would have nine empty bottles. So let's add that nine here as well to empty. And now we want to recalculate how many full bottles that we have or how many we can get now. So let's take this empty, divide it by three, we get three. So that tells us how many full we now have. So let's put that there. So three full bottles. Okay, but what about empty? How do we recalculate how many empty bottles we have? Well, that's what mod is for. So let's mod this by three. The remainder will tell us how many leftover empty bottles we have that we could not exchange. So this is obviously zero. So this will now uh, become zero. Continuing the simulation, take this three, add it to total that we drank, and then take the three, replenish like the empty. That's three now. Now take this, divide it by three, we get one. That tells us how many full we're now going to have. And how many empty would we have? We'll take this, mod it by three, we get zero again, but it could have been like a one or a two or something. This is a pretty simple example, but just keep in mind, this might not always be zero. So right now it is going to be zero though. And now lastly, take this, we drink it. So plus one here. Now it's going to be empty. So move it down here. And now, interesting, let's divide this by three. Oh, we get zero. Okay, so I guess we have zero full bottles. So put that over there, boom. And now we have one empty bottle. Let's mod that by three. And now it actually isn't zero, it's, it's one. We have one empty bottle left. Okay, but what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna keep going in like an infinite loop? There's nothing for us to really do at this point. But why is that? It's because we don't have any more full bottles. We can't drink anything. So our result is never gonna change now. It's gonna remain 13. Okay, now for the time complexity though, because it's not straightforward, is it? Like, is it just gonna be the number of bottles? I mean, I guess that could be a naive way to put it, but one thing I wanna mention to you is, what would happen if we had an exchange rate of one? Um, this would go forever, wouldn't it, right? Like if you can drink nine bottles, have nine empty bottles, and then get nine full bottles again, it's just gonna go forever. So that's why actually in the constraints of this problem, they told us the exchange rate will always at least be two. That means you'll need at least two empty bottles to get a full bottle. Therefore, the number of full bottles will be decreasing even if it's slowly. Okay, so that kind of gives us a hint, doesn't it? Uh, suppose let's say it was two, the exchange rate just for simplicity. So we start, let's say with eight, water bottles. Okay, so divide that by two. Now we have four water bottles because like of the exchange rate, it takes eight and then we get four full ones. Okay, now divide that by two again. It's two. Divide it by two again. It's one. And then it would end up being zero. So what does this look like to you? Well, it's basically saying given this many full bottles, 
like let's call that n, how many times can we divide this by 2, like 2 times 2 times 2? This is basically dividing it by 2 four times, obviously. So let's condense that 2 to the power of, let's say, x. Once this reaches 1, we're done. So this is basically n equals 2 to the power of x. X is the number of times we're going to have to iterate, right? That's going to be the number of times we have to exchange the bottles. So let's solve for X. Okay, I'm going to take the log of both sides because I remember basic algebra. Well, I guess you might not remember it and that's okay. We're not really dealing with logs every day, most of us. So when you do that, if you remember how logs work, this right side will actually just become X. Therefore, the solution to this problem is X equals log. But this was actually a somewhat simplified calculation that I showed you because what was two in our example? What was it? It was the exchange rate. We have two parameters in the input. Does the second one influence the time complexity? It does. And I'm going to call it M. And so now I'm going to replace two here with M. So now I'm going to take the log again. But what log am I going to do? Like log base what? Log base two? Not necessarily. Like this right side over here, we want to cancel everything out so that it's just the X. So I'm going to do log base M of M because that itself is one. And again, like you might not memorize that. You might not know that. And that's okay. I'm just trying to explain it to you. So that cancels out. We'll get X on the right side and the left side will be log base m of n. So both parameters are used in the time complexity. This is the big O time complexity, and I pretty much proved it to you. So now let's code it up. So I'm going to start by initializing the result to zero, and that's ultimately what we're going to return, but we need to do some calculations for that. So while the input number of bottles, I'm not going to create a separate variable for this, like this is gonna represent the number of full water bottles. So while this is greater than zero, let's do some math. Let's, first of all, drink these bottles. And by that, I mean, add them to the result. So something like this. And we wanna keep track of how many empty bottles we have at any given point. It might not always be zero. We will initialize it to zero. But now that we drank these bottles, let's add to empty the number of bottles that we drank. Just like in the simulation, to now get the full bottles, let's calculate it. Let's assign number of full bottles equal to empty divided by the exchange rate. But we want to do integer division. So I'm going to do two slashes here. This will exchange these empty bottles given this exchange rate. Lastly, we want to know if there were any remainders that we were not able to exchange. If that's the case, let's just take empty and mod it by the exchange rate. So I believe this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, it does. And I believe I solved this problem before. Yep, about four years ago. It's fun to kind of revisit memory lane. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.